Hello and welcome to the Ford F-150 Lightning. We found ourselves in an interesting scenario because it's a pretty quiet day before the show and no one really seems to be hanging around this truck. They let us in, they said, go have fun, push every button. And that's exactly what we intend to do. We're gonna do a deep dive of this car's software sort of on the main instrument cluster screen. We have other videos going through interviews with notable people on this truck, but today we're just focusing on the software, the settings, the features, the options, things that you can play around with. And so join me as we sit in the cab and push every button we can find in the F-150 Lightning's infotainment system. <laughs> Guys, you join me in the F-150 Lightning, and I don't know if anyone knows we're in here. No, they do. But <laughs> basically, they said, you know, just play around with it. So let's go on a deep dive of the software, figure out everything we can find. First of all, it looks very much like a Mustang Mach-E in here with this big screen. And of course, you have an F-150 Lightning here in the top left instead of the Mach-E. First, what I want to do is see what apps are available. So you have radio, phone, nav, media, Apple CarPlay, which I believe now is full screen Apple CarPlay, isn't it, Jordan? That's what they say. And Android Auto, Trip Energy, and then games. So we'll start with games. Interesting ones here. I think some of these are new. What's lane change? All right, loading up lane change. Why are we playing games in a pickup truck? Oh, oh my goodness. I would be addicted to this all day. I'm playing in a Mach-E. Whoa! <laughs> Mustang Mach-E passing four GTs. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Anyway, let's not play this anymore. So many things you can do. Trip energy looks pretty interesting. Let's see. So this will tell you what percentage of what you're doing is going to add up to your, you know, your power consumption, I guess, if you will. You also have a trip one and trip two, which is nice. So you can track sort of before you put the trailer on, after you put the trailer on, average um, sort of uh, efficiency ratings, which will be pretty good. And so, okay, this is all pretty normal. Underneath here, you have your heated seats and cooled seats, so I can go down to cooled, up to heated. I have to say the software is so much snappier than Mach-E. This is wonderful. One of the things I've always kind of bugged me about Mach-E is things are a little bit slow and laggy. This is not the case, really fast to respond. That's nice. Anyway, you have this wonderful little knob in the middle that's sort of glued on the screen and um, really feels great. It's knurled, similar to Maki. I love this. I know a lot of people don't like it so much, but I absolutely love the, uh, the knob here. And with software updates, this can do other things too, down into the future. One of the things I thought would be kind of interesting is you see this, this is your pro trailer backup system. So you can actually say, I want the trailer to go this way and it does the steering on the cab. Why not just make this do that? Huh. Maybe because it doesn't return to center, so not sure. But that would have been an interesting implementation. Here in the truck, you have different drive modes when you get into the settings. So normal, sport, off-road, and tow haul. If we look at normal, it says for everyday driving. If we look at sport, it says for spirited and engaging driving. Enhances vehicle acceleration, performance, and driving dynamics. So does that mean you get more power in sport mode? Maybe. If we go into off-road, for off-road driving on sand, gravel, mud, rutted surfaces, or uneven terrain, and it does disable some driver assistance features, it's not intended for on-road. And then tow haul, it says for enhanced vehicle control when towing or hauling heavy loads. One thing I really do have to recommend to a lot of people, I think initially, is to spec the tow haul package because it will give you twice the cooling capacity. It adds a secondary cooling loop inside the um, battery pack and the motors I think that's gonna be kind of needed if you're gonna work this thing pretty hard. Anyway, you also have a one pedal driving and a locking diff setting, which is pretty nice. If I go down to camera, you can see our 360 degree view cameras. That's pretty sweet. Uh, lock access, so you can unlock the trunk, uh, the mega power trunk, excuse me, <laughs> front trunk. Charge port lights, and doesn't look like there's much in there. Here's towing. This is pretty sweet. You can see I've made my own trailer here, my Kyle. And what you can do is you can go into this trailer. We can hit add, for example. Let's say we wanna do out of spec. <laughs> Ford's gonna get in this thing and be like, those guys, what are they doing? <laughs> you can tell, tell them what type of trailer you're putting on, whether it's a uh, one of those surge braking systems or if you have a brake booster, perhaps you could use the brake effort. I'm not sure if that's the brake effort you want or the brake effort you have but it will play around with it. You'd say the length of the trailer. So from the ball to the trailer's rear bumper. 
and then you can say the width. This is really gonna help with range calculations here. One of the things that, that is neat is you should really have a custom setup for each trailer you put on this F-150 because it's going to make individual sort of driving profiles for that trailer. It's gonna know, okay, I have an open trailer that's unloaded, here's the range you can get, and as you drive, it's gonna learn. Then if you put some rigs on the back of it or something, have a separate custom trailer so the truck can learn what it's like when you have it loaded in a certain configuration and do range predictions and things like that. And then this is your trailer height, so we'll have like, let's say a nine, nine foot height trailer. Um, you know, the trailer's GVWR, so this is the maximum the vehicle can weight. And then it says, prompt me for trailer weight at vehicle ignition. ignition. Uh, so I guess that's every time you turn it on, you can ask it to say, hey, I put this much weight in there, which will also help with range calculations. Interestingly, it goes up to 35,000 pounds. So is this saying that it could, I mean, I guess in theory, you could have a trailer that could hold 35,000 pounds as long as you don't tow that much, but that's a big number here for F-150 Lightning. I don't know if maybe we'll see more. Anyway, here's the summary for the out of spec trailer that is totally made up. We've put it in and now it's active. And it says electric range revised due to trailer connected. We were originally at 270 miles, something like that. Now we're down to 206 miles of range with that trailer based off of the input I put in there. That's really neat. I love that it's doing that. It's also factoring in weather and other considerations when doing that. Um, so that's really freaking cool. I'm just gonna put it back to default trailer. And you can see here all of the brake gain information and things like this back up to where were we at the top i don't even know we were back in controls smart hitch so this will help do something or other yeah this is setting up the trailer a similar thing before and uh gets you backed up and in there onboard scales is wonderful this will tell you how much weight is in the bed which is pretty cool so you can do a scale like this or you can do a vehicle like that this is pretty nice it also sets it estimates the, the load. You can't use this for any sort of load certification. Uh, Ford doesn't want to take the, the risk of, of certifying loads if you are sort of using this truck for hire in a uh, commercial sense, especially for weight ratings on highway. Um, you still have to stop at sort of weigh stations and stuff like that is what I assume they're saying here. It also says passenger and cargo load reminder. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, because it's GVWR, you have to set your current load, I guess, as passengers in the cabin, plus whatever's in the scales, and that equals your maximum gross vehicle weight rating legally for the road. So this is so cool that everything is focused here on weights. Everything's really helping you get the maximum out of your truck without going over its design limitations. I love this uh, zone lighting because if you turn this on, we can use these sort of uh, light cannons to shoot out everywhere all around. It's really awesome. I've used this in multiple Ford products from Bronco to F-150 Power Boost Hybrid, and it is so nice to get to a dark area, turn what lights on you want around the vehicle. It's just so rad. I think this particular truck's a Lariat, right, Jordan? Yep, yep Lariat trim, so one down from the max. Here's your pro power system. If we turn it on, you can see it's gonna tell you how many watts we're gonna be doing. The vehicle's off right now, so it's not necessarily gonna work. And then you can also have it turn off at a selected value. This would be, I guess, if you get down to 20% or 30% state of charge, then it will kill pro power and you can no longer pull it. But I think you can get nine or 10 kilowatts out of this, which is just absolutely amazing. If we go over here to the parking section, it says navigate to parking. I don't know what that would be. I guess it parks itself, which is kind of cool. And then we can go into additional settings. We'll get there in a second to go through all the settings, but this is the last. And then you get a valet mode, which will lock certain things. I don't believe it locks things such as the hidden glove box or this one here, although it's very possible that it does. But I did want to show you the hidden glove box, of course. There's also some other cool features before we get uh, deeper down into this. Uh, if you push this shifter all the way down like that, you can then open this up as a working space. So if you're sitting at a charger and want to get some work done, you have a great flat surface here, great for eating. I had, again, the Power Boost Hybrid, and I used this for so many purposes. It's really absolutely wonderful. Love it. It's also a wireless charger, USB-A, USB-C down there, two chunky cup holders, sort of a pen holder here in the middle. You have your trailer assist backup, sensors for your Copilot 360 for eye tracking. You have your brake booster here, so you can have this gain set differently. A physical start-stop button, really nice cab interior. It feels like normal F-150. It's just 
honestly the way it should be. Feels like America, if you ask me. Let's go into the settings now. Uh, inside of the top, sound and audio are off. That's because the car is off. Even if I try and turn this on. Oh wait, did it pop on for a second? So here we go, off. So you get sound settings here. So you can do your treble, mid-range, and bass and set the volume where you want. You also have stereo or surround sound selections, very similar to other Fords. Here you have your radio. You can have your different preset roads. And if you want AM HD radio, you can add your Bluetooth phones here. Here's your charge stuff. So you right now it's set to 99% state of charge. This one time max charge limit basically says, I want the truck to charge to 70% state of charge right now. And I absolutely love that you can actually do individual ones all the way from zero <laughs> and 1% increments. I've never seen that before. The lowest I've seen is 10% on Hyundai Kia stuff. This is like, nope, I'm going to charge to 1%. So what you could do, and I'm not advising you to do this, but if your friend owns an F-150 Lightning, just put it to one. <laughs> say, Good luck, Jim. <laughs> We'll put it back to 100 since that's what Ford wants. This is where you can reset your EV driving history so you can adjust sort of your usage and range to get this you know, projected range. So let's do that really quick. Resetting our EV driving history. We got one more mile of range. And that's just because we told it we have the trailer on. So don't use this as a point of reference as to the range. It still thinks we're in trailering mode. And I honestly don't know how to tell it. We now don't have a trailer on it. Whoops. Anyway, uh, departure and comfort. This is where you can set preconditioning for a certain times. So you can have it set to cool, medium temperature, or warm. I love that. That's so nice. Not many vehicles let you choose uh, not individual temperatures, but a cool environment. I wonder who determined what the crossover is between a cool cabin and a medium cabin. Uh, charging locations. So these are all the vehicles that the are the locations that the vehicle is charged at. None. They probably reset before they came in here. Personal profiles will log your driving style, uh, your seat preference, everything from climate control to radio, and uh, you can have it do this. It'll also use your phone as a key if I remember correctly. Here's all your driver assistance uh, situation. So you can have auto hold, which is great. Uh, lane centering with hands-free with Blue Cruise. You can have activation prompts and speed sign recognition where it will adjust to the speed limit and you can keep it over, I believe, five miles over the speed limit. Or maybe this is just a warning, but I believe that's the case. Um, lane keeping system, you can have it in alert or alert plus aid. This is if you're driving without the assistance, you touch the line, it'll push you back in. Pre-collision assist is awesome. Distance indication, evasive steering assist. These are all of the great safety features that I feel should be standard on every car. And as long as there's an override, if you're doing something weird with it, like a track day or something like that, um, let it turn off. But these, this is fantastic to have. You have blind spot monitoring, you have parking sensors front and rear. So if you have a trailer, for example, you may want to turn off the rear parking assist so it's not beeping at you all the time, which is always nice. And there you go. Here's the vehicle settings that we're getting into. Valet zone limits. Ah, so is this if like vehicle goes over 40 miles an hour, <laughs> if the speed and acceleration of your vehicle when valet mode is active and it restricts it. So basically it slows down the thing and lets you know if they're trying to hot rod it around. <laughs> that would be useful at some places I know. Um, key detection alert, which I guess is sounds the horn when you exit your vehicle with a key after the last door is closed and you forgot to shut off the car. That's nice. That's the thing that goes beep, beep. That drives me nuts every time I get to a charging station. I love that you can turn that off now though. Um, basically all of this is very fairly standard from the um, Mustang Mach-E. You can have a power or manual rear tailgate if you decide you don't want the power thing. You can also have it tell you when you have 50 miles of range left or 30 miles of projected range left that your battery is low. You can again reset your EV driving history like that and then of course you have an emergency tow into general settings all of this stuff is pretty standard always turn off the touch screen beep that drives me nuts um, i think this screen looks best in dark mode if you ask me but that's my opinion we'll keep it in dark mode for now and then you have a clock which you can set to automatic time updates connectivity for bluetooth and in-car wi-fi networks such as your vehicle hotspot right here which is currently on this is where you go to for software updates. So it can do automatic updates, things like this. You just connect to your Wi-Fi network. It says it's fully up to date right now. Here are the, some of the apps you can do. Your preconditioning schedule, if you will. 911 assist is awesome. If you get into an accident, it'll help you call and get someone. 
Ford Assistant is the um, uh, voice commands to the car. Again, now we're into a trailer setting. There is a built-in trailer sway mode, which is awesome. So how do I tell it I'm no longer towing? I don't really know. Delete Kyle trailer, yes. And now it says 275 miles of range. There's gotta be a better way than that, but that's just what I did. And then you have ambient lighting, which you can put to whatever brightness you want, but I don't see a color adjustment in this particular one. So maybe this one doesn't have it. Anyway, there's a full run through on the software of the F-150 Lightning. There's also some here in this screen, but it's off, so I can't actually go through. One of the things I do wanna mention is there's temperature readouts for your battery and motor. I'm not sure if it'll show you front and rear motor or an average of them, but I love that now Ford's gonna be displaying the temperatures of the driveline to you so you can better manage things if you need to. But I think if you get the, the trailer, um, Max trailer tow package, it should help with the extra cooling. Um, to me, that would be the first option I tick for my use case of this truck. Overall, great steering wheel, great cab. Everything else is pretty standard F-150. You have some sunroof controls up here. You have a nice glasses holder here. We'll be doing a ton of in-depth stuff with this. You have another NEMA 520 20 amp outlet here, which is pretty sweet, um, which is cool. 12 volt outlet. I really love this new display. Also, should we try a route planning situation, Jordan? Okay, so let's go to navigation. We're here in Chicago at the auto show. Where do we want to go? Yeah, Fort Collins, Colorado. Let's see if it can do it. Fort Collins, Colorado, really fast. It's 911 miles away. And let's see what it says. It says it's uh, looking for three different route options. It's going to choose the route that has faster time. I have it set to calculating chargers. This already is nicer than Mustang mach -E. This is a long trip, so I don't mind that it takes a little while to think about our sort of route plan. I also don't know what kind of connectivity the vehicle has right now. Let's hit go and see what it does. So it's calculating here. You can see 20, 30, 40%, 100%. Chargers are being added to the trip. Thank you for not asking if I wanted chargers added to the trip. It's just doing it, which is the way it should be. Please Look at this. drive to highlighted route. 15 hours, 16 minutes. It says seven chargers equals of three hours of charging time. Ah, wonderful, Ford is getting it. It even tells you what you're gonna be arriving to the charger with. So for example, this green lots in Casey's, uh, I'm going to arrive at 10% and charge it to 61%. It's gonna take 35 minutes. All the Electrify Americas across the way that we're gonna hit, arriving at 10% state of charge, which is just a pretty good state of charge to target. This is great route planning. Why can no one else do this? And it'll even adapt for your trailer and things in real time. This is such elementary items that Ford is just killing everyone else on right now, in my opinion. This is awesome. There's other cars, of course, that do route planning, but this is, this is fantastic. Anyway, we'll get more in depth when we can test it. For example, I'd be curious if we can set our arrival state of charge, but seems to be doing everything really well. Love the route plan, love the adjustability, love how many settings there are. I love sitting in this cab. The F-150 Lightning is gonna, they'll sell every single one they can make. And back to my original point, I don't think an electric truck works for everyone, but I think there's enough people that it does work for, for ones that they can actually make. And can't wait to see these out on the road, being pushed to their limits, working hard, and I'm just so pleased with Ford's electrification strategy. This and E-Transit are two of my favorite EVs coming out this year. And uh, can't wait to spend more time with them. Thanks so much for watching. A deep in-dive tour, in-depth tour of the F-150 software. If there's anything more you'd like to see, it's all pretty similar to Mach-E where it'll pull up your previous used things. It's pretty sweet. You even have a dedicated traction control off button for drifting. <laughs> see you on the next one.